What causes insulin resistance? Or what causes diabetes in terms of what we eat? Most people associate sugar and diabetes, and so the thinking is that sugar causes diabetes. You have a big plate of 100% whole wheat spaghetti. Let's look at what happens when this enters our body. So starch, that's our long chains of carbohydrate. That breaks down into glucose, the small little bits of carbohydrate. Glucose goes all throughout our circulation and is stored in our muscle cells. That way, when we go to do a bicep curl, that energy is available where it is needed in the muscle cell. So let's zoom in and look at that muscle cell and look at exactly how we store the glucose, the sugar, in the muscle cell. So this is a picture of a muscle cell. Up top, we have our insulin receptor. Down at the bottom, we have our glucose vesicle that's waiting to pick up the glucose that's hanging out outside the cell in the bloodstream. Insulin is our key. It unlocks the door. It signals the insulin receptor, which signals all of these downstream enzymes that together allow the glucose vesicle to move to the edge and invite glucose into the cell. That is how a happy cell should work. But what if there was no insulin? Quite simply, if we don't have the key to unlock the door, of course, sugar is going to build up outside the cell. That's what happens in type 1 diabetes, which is not the case in most people. But what if there is enough insulin, but for some reason the insulin doesn't work? So in this scenario, we have the key to unlock the door. It looks like all the players are in place, but something is gumming up the lock in our muscle cell. What's gumming up the lock in our muscle cells? It's intramyocellular lipids, or fat, in our muscle cells. So in response to a high fat diet, those fatty acids in the bloodstream, they enter the muscle cell, they break down into free fatty acids and all of these toxic breakdown products that together block the insulin signaling pathway. So there are two approaches to treating diabetes. In the first approach, we take a look at this scenario and we say, you know what? You have insulin resistance. Your muscle cells are shot. The next best thing to do is go on a low carb diet because how can your sugar possibly spike if you are not consuming any sugar? So what happens is people will start to follow a more low carbohydrate eating style and they're eating more meat, more cheese, and maybe a side of broccoli also. They're eating a diet that is higher in fat overall. The problem with this approach is it's not actually addressing the insulin resistance. The second approach to treating diabetes, as recommended by the American College of Lifestyle Medicine, is a more plant-based eating style. That means we're focusing on fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, and as you can imagine, these foods tend to be very, very low in fat. By following a more plant-based diet, we can unclog the muscle cell and repair the underlying mechanism. So the difference is a low carb eating style can control the symptoms of diabetes, but we're not actually addressing the underlying insulin resistance the way we are with a more plant-based eating style. So what exactly is a plant-based diet? So the full term is a whole foods plant-based diet. Whole foods meaning single ingredient foods, unprocessed or minimally processed as they exist in nature. Plant-based in its broadest sense means we're consuming at least 95% of our calories from fruits, vegetables, whole grains, and beans. Typically when we're working on reversing diabetes in the office, we recommend going 100% until we start to see the results we're looking for. For a lot of people, complete abstinence is easier than perfect moderation when it comes to a plant-based diet. So what's the deal with carbohydrates, right? When we talk about plant-based diets, people are told, okay, you know, we're going to cut out more of the meat and the cheese and the high fat foods, focus more on plants. People are still pretty hesitant with carbohydrates. So let's look at carbohydrates. They are not all good or bad. It depends on the type. So on one end, we have our unprocessed or minimally processed carbohydrates. These are our sweet potatoes, the logs on the fire. They are loaded with fiber and water and allow a nice slow release of energy. On the other end of the spectrum, we have our highly processed carbohydrates. This is our frosted flakes. These carbohydrates are digested quickly. They're void of fiber. A lot of times the water's removed. We've lost a lot of the nutrition and we get a big spike in energy. What does process really mean? It is any means by which a food is broken down or prepared. So typically we add salt, sugar, fat, making the food more addictive, more caloric, more delicious. At the same time, we are reducing fiber and water, making the food less filling and thus easier to overeat. Plain old corn is an unprocessed food. It is a whole plant-based food. Highly processed, that's our frosted flakes, potato chips. Those are the foods we want to avoid. Same idea with potatoes. People are racist against white potatoes because they are white, but they have nothing in common with highly refined white foods like 
Wonder Bread. So a potato is actually a great choice. It's going to be very, very low in fat to help you unclog those muscle cells. And the calories are fairly dilute due to its fiber and water content. But the reason potatoes are a problem is what people put on them or what they make the potato into, like the potato chips. Same idea with wheat. Shredded wheat cereal, unfrosted of course, is going to be our least processed option. As we process, we get things like great grain cereal or crackers, cookies, etc. that are not going to be great options. Same idea with rice, brown is best. With oatmeal, our best options are steel cut oats or something like old fashioned oats. These are going to be minimally processed. We want to avoid instant oats and refined oatmeal snacks. So what should I eat? No, no, this is not a lettuce and tomato diet. This is not a rabbit food diet. A lot of people think a plant-based diet means a vegetable-based diet, and then they're set up for failure if all they're going to eat is vegetables, right? You cannot sustain yourself on lettuce, tomatoes, and vegetables alone. So this is what it looks like. Lentil tacos, mixed bean chili, grain bowls, loaded sweet potatoes, African peanut stew, black bean tortilla soup, vegetable fajitas, spinach and mushroom grits, vegetable tamales, rice and beans, collards, black-eyed peas, sweet potato, black bean quesadillas, stuffed peppers. A lot of people overestimate how hard it will be to switch to a plant-based diet, but once you get going, it is quite easy to continue. If you want more information on reversing your diabetes with a plant-based diet, I'd recommend Neil Barnard's book, Program for Reversing Diabetes, which can be purchased on Amazon. Also, if you want to follow me on Facebook, Food is Medicine Greenville, I post resources quite often on specifically reversing diabetes.